In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Amen. Before I begin my sermon this morning, I wanted to ask you all if you ever felt like there has been a time in your life when you feel like maybe you've missed out on a golden opportunity to do something. You missed out on a golden opportunity. I heard a story one time about a shoe salesman that went to Africa on behalf of his company so that they could expand their territory. However, after trying for two weeks there in Africa, he contacted his company and he told them that he was leaving because he said, nobody here in Africa wears shoes and I can't make a sale. And so he came home. So the company, not wanting to quit, sent another salesman back to that very same region. And after another two weeks, this salesman also contacted the company. But this time, the salesman said, please send me all the shoes as fast as you possibly can, because nobody here wears shoes, and they're selling like crazy. One of these men, in that story I heard, missed a golden opportunity. And the other, that salesman in Africa, capitalized on a golden opportunity. Scripture is filled with stories of people who missed out on golden opportunities, and also filled with stories of others who seized great opportunity. One famous example is found in the Old Testament when there were all those people who missed out on that opportunity to climb aboard that boat that Noah built. They missed their opportunity and they perished in the flood because they refused to act when Noah was calling them to get on. But Noah recognized God's voice in that story. He was obedient, and so he was spared. And there's the example of the two thieves who were crucified along with Jesus on the crosses next to him. One seized the opportunity and begged Jesus to remember him in his kingdom, and he was promised to be with Jesus in paradise that night. The other thief mocked Jesus and received his just reward. And then there's the story of the Good Samaritan, where we hear of two out of three people who missed an opportunity to reach out and help a man that they found lying beaten and suffering and injured on the side of the road to Jericho. Two out of three men actually went out of their way to ignore the chance to help the man laying on the side of the road. And only one was willing to show that man compassion and to have mercy on that injured man and to help nurture him back on his way. And Jesus made an example of that one man, saying that we also are called to go out into the world and do likewise. And then in the gospel lesson that we heard this morning, we heard another story of a man who missed an opportunity and who, it says in this story, regretted that decision later on. The gospel said that there was once a rich man who dressed with the best clothes and who apparently lived in a beautiful gated house and who ate the very finest of food. And we heard that at the gate of this wealthy man's home, there was a poor man. And in one of the only times, maybe the only time, in any parable in Scripture, we hear that one of the characters has a name. This poor man's name was Lazarus. And he was lying there at the gate every single day day in and day out. 
and he was covered with sores, it says in the Gospel. And all he desired was to be fed with the crumbs that fell from that rich man's table. But he was never once throughout his entire life recognized or noticed by the rich man as he came and went. Then the Gospel says that Lazarus died and that he was carried up into heaven by angels to the bosom of Abraham, it says in the Gospel. And it says that the rich man also died. And it says that the rich man found himself in a place called Hades and was living in torment, it says. So the Gospel says that this rich man lifted up his eyes to the heavens and he saw Abraham and Lazarus, the poor man, laying in the bosom of Abraham. And so he cried out, Father Abraham, send Lazarus down and let him dip his finger into water so that he may cool my tongue. But it says that Abraham answered him and said this, Remember, in your lifetime, when you were living, you had all your good things, and Lazarus had nothing. Now he is well cared for, and you are in great pain. And besides this, there is a deep ditch between us, and no one from either side can cross over this ditch. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the man in the Gospel this morning realized only too late that he missed out on a golden opportunity. An opportunity to act out on a simple human virtue that all too often we all fail to act upon. And that's the human virtue of showing compassion to our fellow man. The man in the Gospel had the golden opportunity pre presented to him in front of him, literally, in his front doorstep. Every single day of his life when Lazarus was laying there for who knows how many years. But his eyes were closed to recognize that opportunity because he was focused only on his own needs and only on his own personal struggles and only on his own concerns. And in the end, he not only found himself regretting the missed opportunity, but actually wishing that he could trade places with that same person, Lazarus, that he wanted nothing to do with while he was living. And ultimately, his fate was sealed in the end, and he found himself not only in a place of torment, but a place of eternal separation from the comfort and from the peace and from the satisfaction that he had while living here in this world, and that only comes from living in the presence of God in the world which is to come. In the book of Galatians in the New Testament, St. Paul says that as Christians, in order to fulfill the law of Christ, we are to bear one another's burdens. We are to bear one another's burdens. We are called to initiate the action of caring for others and of showing compassion for others because that's how we actually participate in Christ's ongoing ministry to this world, a ministry of compassion. But in order to do this, we must have our eyes open. We must open our eyes when opportunity presents itself to us. And we must seize those opportunities whenever they present themselves to us. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, it's easy, isn't it, to get bogged down with the cares of this world. We're all flying by the seat of our pants. I feel it. You feel it. We all feel it. 
We're more busy in life than we, than is even good for us. We don't even know what to do with our busy lives. We're all caught up in a whirlwind, and we're all preoccupied. That's just the world we live in, I think. And I'm not suggesting that it's not important to take care of ourselves or to take care of our families, not at all. Because even in Scripture, it talks about the necessity of looking out for our own interests. But it also tells us in Scripture never to get, never to forget that we must always also look out for the interest of those around us. It says in his letter to the Philippians, St. Paul says that it's even better to esteem others better than ourselves and to show compassion to them and to heal them and to give them comfort. Jesus never missed out on an opportunity to do those things. And we're called as Christians to share in the joy of carrying on his ministry of compassion to others living in this world around us. So as we reflect on the gospel lesson this morning, this gospel that talks of missed opportunity to show compassion to others, and the tragic result that may occur if we don't seize those opportunities, let us never forget to stay alert and let us never forget to keep our eyes wide open and to always look for ways to show compassion to our neighbors so that in the end, we too, like the blessed Lazarus, may be carried by the angels up into the heavenly holy of holies, into the rest, restful bosom of Abraham, and into the eternal presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.